Hi, my name is Bill Raymond, and in this video, I'm going to use Visual Studio to publish my Azure functions up to Azure. And I'm going to quickly walk through creating a project, but if you want to learn how to create a project in a bit more detail, there's another video I created, and you can go to the notes below the video on YouTube, and you can get that link. As I mentioned, I've already created a project in another video, so I'm going to do this pretty quickly. I'm going to create a new cloud Azure function project. Inside this app, I'm going to add two different functions. And I'll just choose function one, make this as an HTTP trigger, call that HTTP trigger C sharp one, and create. Next, I'll add another one. Now inside of each one of these functions, I want to be able to tell them apart because Microsoft provides this sort of code scaffolding for them with a little hello world example. You actually, it's actually hello name. Well, if you can, if you pass through, for example, hello, if you type pass through the name Bill, it will say hello Bill. So I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to change the message text if it's a bad request to function one and we'll just leave uh, that the same. And then in function two, I'll come in here and say this is function two. And instead of hello name, I'm going to say what's up name there. And I'll just go ahead and run this to make sure that it works. Next, I'll just grab this URL for the first one and paste it into the browser. And it says function one, that's great. And let's just also test it. It says, hello, Bill. Now we'll come over here and grab that other URL, test that one out. As you can see, it says function two. So we should also have to say, what's up, Bill, when I do that? Yep, it does. Okay, so now we know the function works just fine. So what I'm gonna do next is exit out of here and publish the solution up to Microsoft Azure. Technically, you should be able to create your project directly from Visual Studio, but I've had lots of problems with that. Uh, it doesn't seem to create the storage accounts or something quite right. I'm not sure what it is, but I do know what the app needs before we go and publish it. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a few resources right now. The first thing I'll do is create a resource here and I'm looking for a storage resource and a blob file table queue will be fine. And I'm just going to call this BR Azure functions storage and click create. Oh, there's an error. Ah, resource group. We'll just call this Azure function app. Oh, also I'll choose a location. Might as well choose the one near me. I'm in San Francisco. Looks like I can't quite get down there. US West 2. There we go. Now let's try it. And we'll wait for that to deploy. As you can see over here on the right hand side, it looks like our storage account was successfully created. So the next thing we need to do is create an app service plan. Now there's a little icon over here that says app services. I'll go ahead and click this. If you can't find it, just click the add button and create an app service from there. I'll just go ahead and select this. Click add. And then there's a number of app services to select from. We're just going to choose web app. 
and you can see there's an just a kind of a blade here where you scroll from left to right. So over here on the right hand side, what I'm doing is just going to select the web app and click create. All right, so I'll go ahead and give this a name. This will be BR Azure function, function app. Looks good. And I'll use an existing group, which is this one that I just created earlier. And for the location, for me, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new one here. And call this the um, Azure App Service Plan BR for Bill Raymond. And I'm just going to choose US West 2 because I am in San Francisco and click OK. And I'll go ahead and create that. And we'll wait for that deployment to complete. Now we have everything we need to publish our project to Azure. Now again, we shouldn't have to do this, but right now with the preview state, it doesn't always work too well. So again, we have a storage account, an app service, and an app service plan. And I think we're good to go. In order to publish our app, we actually have to publish the whole app, not just the individual functions. So if I right click, for example, on function one, you'll notice there's no publish option. But if I right click on function app one, you'll see there's a publish option. So I'll go ahead and choose that. This brings you to the publishing screen. You can do one of two things, publish to Azure or publish to a folder. The folder doesn't work at this time. This is May 11th, 2017 while I'm recording this. So this is the very first preview of Azure Function Tools for Visual Studio. This does not work. I haven't also been able to get the select existing to work. So it looks like you're kind of just going to use Azure Functions app and create new. Click the publish button. The create app service dialog appears and you're going to notice that it says, what's the function app name? And you're going to say, well, wait a minute, Bill, I thought you created a function app. Well, actually, let's go back to the browser for a minute here. And they will point out, I did call this BR Azure Function App. I probably should have called it BR Azure Function App Service. So it's just the service that we set up. This is what's going to be used to run our app. And it's basically, think of that as the server it's running on more than anything else. Although I don't think I should be using the word server because this is serverless computing. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Okay, so what we'll do is make sure that the subscription is right. You might need to log in. So you can see I'm logged in up here. And you'll have to choose a resource group, app service plan, storage account. And since we set all that up, everything should be fine. Let's come over here to services. And you can see there's some resource types you can add. I have not tried this but I'm guessing you add these things if, for example, your function needs to call a database. Now let's go ahead and click the Create button. Down at the bottom left, you'll see this deploying, and we'll just sit here and wait and see what happens. Once you're done, there's one of three things that's going to happen. One is you're going to get a screen like this, Two, you're going to get a screen like this, but afterwards you're going to minimize Visual Studio and minimize your browsers and everything like that and look at your desktop and you might see an error there. The error message appears below Visual Studio, so don't just go and click like this little right hand side hot area where you can go to the desktop. Minimize all your screens and just make sure that there is no error message somewhere. If that happens, then you can go to your browser and go into your function. And then you'll look and see if your functions are listed here under functions. If they're not, then that means that it didn't publish all the way. My experience has been if I get to this screen and it did publish, I can just press the publish button again 
and then it will work the second time. The other thing that could happen is you'll click create a new profile. I'm sorry, this, sorry, you won't click this. You'll get a screen that looks like this. It'll basically act like the project was never published and it's going to ask you how you want to publish it. And if that's the case, then you can get, again go back to your Azure portal and you'll probably see the function is there, but it will have nothing in it. So just delete that because you're going to have to start again. Again, this is all preview stuff. Okay, mine did publish. And if I do come here to the Azure portal and I do go to my Azure function, I can see my two functions here. Now, let me walk you through this. Once again, we right-clicked, we chose publish, we went through the dialogue, we published it, we got to this screen. Now, when you get to the screen, it says, here's a site URL. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that URL. And here it's saying your function app is running. And so you're going, well, this is, how do I tell? What's, you know, how do I use my function app? I'm going to show you that in just a moment. This is just letting you know that the app's running. And if you click learn more, you'd think, oh, this is going to teach me more about my app. No, it's just going to bring you to some instructional pages. So this is useful just so you know uh, that it is actually running. Where you really want to go is to your Azure portal. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to step you through this one more time. We're in the Azure portal. We'll go to the functions app, and that's the one that has the little lightning bolt. And we'll come here to functions and you'll see here is your two functions. Now you might get a little spinning thing here telling you that it's waiting. That just means that your function is still updating. So after that's done, you'll come over here and you should see a JSON um, file set up for you. I'm going to go ahead and click run. And over here on the right hand side, you'll see that I want to run a, a request and it'll say either get or post. The first thing I'm going to point you to here is that it says bad request because I just ran that function without passing any, any parameters. And you can see it says function one, please pass a name on. If I can bring your attention back to Visual Studio, remember we typed the word function one here and over here we typed the word function two. I'll also point out that a function two says what's up and function one says hello. So let's come back here and let's take a look. We're at uh, C sharp function one. So I'll just go and add a parameter and say name is Bill. And now I'll run it down here on the bottom right hand corner. There you can see it says hello Bill. So that worked. Now let's try the other trigger. I should say the other function. And on this side, I'm going to click run. And you can see it's actually remembering uh, hello, the name Bill, the, that same test. But look what happened down here with the output. It says, what's up, Bill? And if I just really want to be sure here, I can delete that parameter and run it. And it should say function two. And it does. Great, so that's how you publish your Azure function. The next thing I'm going to do is quickly show you how you can make changes and push those up. I'm back in Visual Studio, and I'm going to go ahead and make a change to function one. I actually want the response text to also tell me what function is running. So I'll just say this is function one, and then say, hey there and then it will show the name. I'll just go ahead and build that solution. And I'll come over here to function one app, go to publish. So I just right click and choose publish and I'll click publish. Now the box here is gray. The button is gray. After it's done, it will come back to the sort of white color and then you can click it again. But let's go ahead to our browser and we'll go back to the trigger, the uh, <laughs> Azure function one. And let's go ahead and run a get request and run it. 
does say function one. Now let's go ahead and add that parameter of name is Bill and it should also show us function one there. Whoop. What's going on here? Ah, I see the problem. This has, uh, I have to actually type name. <laughs> um, the background text on that label there is name, so that's a little bit confusing. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and run this. And now you can say it, you can see here it says, this is function one, and hey there, Bill. So you can see that once you do your publish, almost immediately you're going to get the updated solution. This video is not designed to teach you how to use Azure Functions, but I will point out how you can access this in the browser rather than through the Azure portal. Up at the top right-hand corner, you can see it says Get Function URL, and if you go ahead and click that, you can see it gives me a whole uh, URL that I can access. This is set up as a function, so it has this key associated with it. So you can see um, this is my function right here, and then it, there's a, a key code that's associated with it for protection. So I'm gonna go ahead and click copy and close that. And now I'm gonna go here to a new tab and I'll open up the address bar and paste that URL in. If I press enter, you can see it says function one, please pass the name of a query string. Okay, so let me do that. This time I'll type and name equal bill. And there we go, it says, this is function one, hey there, Bill. So that's basically how you get your app published using Visual Studio 2017. Thank you for watching this video. Please press the like button if this was a useful video for you, and please subscribe to our channel. It's really helpful for us if you're looking for more videos. Thank you.